Alrighty. Welcome to the Rise University podcast, where we interview 20 to 30 year old self made millionaire entrepreneurs. Tonight we have a special guest with us, Mr. Jacob Howie. Uh, Jacob, real quick, uh, just a little quick intro for you. Um, he's one of the top salespeople in one of the top offices in Rise Energy, which is one of the largest solar companies uh, in the nation right now. And uh, Mr. Jacob Howie here is 21 years old, right? Yes, sir. Been in sales for two years. Uh, this last year, you cleared multiple six figures, dominated, and uh, dude, we're we're happy to have you on on the podcast, man. Man, uh, dude, <laughs> I am honestly blessed. I Thank am you. blessed, dude, to be on here. Thank um, you. I just hearing the other podcasts and just hearing the other guys that were on here. It's definitely going to be a good one. I can tell you that. Heck much. yeah, I love Excited, it. Excited, Taylor. Excited. I love it, dude. So let's just uh, let's just jump straight into this, man. So everyone, you know, everyone wants to know how how we have so many guys. Uh, that are as young as you are, um, just absolutely killing it, man. Mm-hmm. You have no college college education, right? No college education. No college education. Okay, wh- where where did you come from? How did you how did you get to this point? Um, and, and I kind of want to know, yeah, the, the basics of the story of how you literally went from probably nothing. I can't imagine you had a whole lot handed to you prior. No, nothing. Okay. And you went from nothing to, to literally just absolutely dominating your path. You're going to be, I can guarantee you're going to be one of the top uh, managers within the company here really, really soon. hundred percent. Yes. And, uh, probably a seven figure earner yes, really, sir. really soon. So, so tell us, man, where do you come from? How'd you get this, this started on this journey and, and what put you in the position to be dominating like you are currently? hundred mm-hmm. percent. Great question. Um, so to honestly bring it way back, um, like where I first started on my journey, I was more of an athlete, right? Yeah. I was a huge baseball, huge basketball guy. Um, just Real sports, real athletics. So you, and you played, you played, I assume, all throughout high school? Yeah. So Multiple sports? Yeah, coming in freshman year, um, went straight to varsity, pitcher. Really? You know, was throwing mid-85s freshman year, right? Wow. Um, then bumped it up, was throwing 90, 91 coming out my senior year, um, and definitely was just addicted to baseball. I played yeah. it since I was 12. I played basketball, um, just huge sports, right? Um no way that I thought that I was going to be in a position because when you're in sports, right, you don't know what you don't know um, when you're coming out of high school. When you're coming out of high school, kids that have sports, they don't really know if they're going to take on college, if they're going to go play college, if they're going to be able to go play the sport that they're going to do, right? And right. I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, so started to build a uh, Twitter, um, started to release my own highlights of my pitching at a nice. Boulder Creek high school, started pitching there, released Twitter highlights, got a little college scholarship, right? Really? Uh, yeah. You had offers. Yes. I had only one, um, okay. to be honest, one because offer. I, uh, just posted it, you know, yeah. trying to get something. Um, so I posted on my own Twitter, got a bunch of views on there. Um, got a look, um, at South mountain community college, nice. um, out in Arizona. Okay. Um, huge Juco college. Um, and then I started seeing a different vision, right? I started getting into this mindset because my family, realistically, I had to find a way. Um, My whole life, I definitely had a background of having my mom and my dad there, right? Um, My whole life, being able to have them in my life since, you know, growing up. I had both both parents. Um, To be honest, it's just got harder. Things got harder as my junior year in high school started. You're saying your fi- family dynamic was struggling. Yeah, it was struggling. It was getting um, more so. I had to figure out, like, hey, if I go play baseball, this is not going to make me money. This is right. not going to – I'm not going to be able to help my mom. Did you have hopes of potentially going to, like, play pro? I yeah. mean, a lot of, a lot of oh. young kids do, do, right? Oh, man. I bet you, like, nobody in high school that's playing a sport right now is sitting there not wanting to go to that next level, right? right. So I had coaches. I had – My family members, I had my aunts, I had my uncles, I had so many people that wanted me to go to that next level that really saw, like, this is a way of me getting past all the things that were going on in my family. Breaking through. Yeah, like, breaking through with all the stuff that I was dealing with back Mm -hmm. at home and honestly going to play baseball, to get Mm -hmm. out of that, to have my own start, to have my own So you were actually pretty dang good. If if, if you're telling me everybody was, you know, in your corner cheering you on, you had to have been pretty decent then. Yeah, no, I was definitely, I was definitely (laughs) nice. I definitely love sports, and I could definitely, truthfully, see myself, even if I made multiple millions of dollars going and trying to play overseas or doing something like that. But that's a huge another topic, right? Right, right, But, um, yeah, so I started going into that, started getting into mindset, started getting into trainings, started to, like, 
just learning about other aspects of life, the yeah. millionaire mindsets, the different type of mindsets um, in this world. And yeah. I started watching videos at my mom's house up upstairs, like learning all these things. So, so you're saying you were still in high school when you when you got found out about, about the world of entrepreneurship and and like what success looks like. Yes. And it caught your attention. Yes, it yeah. really did. It okay. really did. I started watching crazy videos of just like all these things about like just how you can develop yourself into this human to attract the success. And yep. um, people thought I was crazy. It was kind of going into my yep. senior year um, when I really was just sitting there graduating. We were all going through there with our, you know, our gapes and all the stuff, whatever, yep. you know, when we're going there to graduate yep, high school. Gown. Yep, cap and gown. Yep. About to graduate, right? And I'm just sitting there like, yo, I, you don't need college. You don't need this. You don't need that. And all these people are like, no, we're going to college. And I'm just sitting there. They know me as an athlete. And I'm like, you know, it's time. It's right. time to make something happen for my family. No right. one's coming to save, right. you know, the Howie name. Like, so you took ownership. Yeah, honestly. You 100%. realized there was not going to be any handouts. No, and there wasn't. You know, like nobody's giving that in my family. No one has stopped like a generational thing, like yeah. where I really do want to have generational wealth Absolutely. Um, for my family. And that's right. nobody's passing that down to me right now, which is Kind of just crazy to me. Right. You, you, you know what I'm saying? A hundred percent, man. So, okay. um, do you mind if I tell the kind of the story of actually how we met? Yes. So, uh, dude, so you were probably still in high school, right? Mm -hmm. uh, were you a senior at that point? Yes. I was like not even out of, I'm like fresh, like about to graduate out of high school, going yeah. to that little meetup so and everything. So when we met, how, how much longer prior to our, when we met um, had you been like realizing that you really want to take entrepreneurship and and just you know success by the by the horns and just and just go go that direction. It was like, I, and that's the crazy thing. Like it was like less than like I would realistically say like a month because yeah. I was like okay. learning all these things, picking it all up during high school, right? And now I'm like attracting it, learning oh, about yeah. the law of attraction, oh, doing yeah. all these crazy things. And next thing you know, I'm ending up at a penthouse, right, yep. at a random event. Yeah. And I run into you, yeah. and uh, and then you just start changing my mindset. Just I, I was, saw you up there doing a little speech or something, yep. and I wanted to pull you aside to kind of figure out, like, yo, like, what do I got to do? Yeah. Like, what do I got to do to have the success, you know? Dude, I, I remember, um, you know, yeah, so so you obviously you got invited to, a like, an entrepreneur event, essentially, at my at my place. And I remember you coming up to me. Obviously, we, we didn't know each other at all. You came up to me, and I remember you just – I could tell – I could see the look in your eyes that you were so hungry, dude. Mm -hmm. I could, t I could just, I could literally see it, bro. Like there was a sirloin <laughs> steak, like <laughs> right in front of me, like yeah. ready to attack. Hundred percent, dude. Yeah. And uh, and bro, I, I, you were like, you, I think you asked me something along the lines of like, how do you do it, man? Like, like how? Like what? Show me, like tell me, what are the actual steps, man? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was like, man, this kid's, he's definitely he wants it, bro. He remind, I mean, you reminded uh, me of of what I was before when I first started, you know, exactly. I mean? just a young kid knowing that no one's going to give you a handout. The, the world doesn't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's your, it's your job to go, to go dominate your path and, and, and bring the success, bring the money, bring the, the, the life freedom that you want, time, freedom, et cetera. Uh, it, it's your job to go do it. Yeah. And that's one thing that I really do think Taylor, that most people don't, um, like understand is that in this life, like if your family, you come from a background of someone that works like a nine to five job, you see your mom coming home, she works, she wakes up, you know, she goes, sh she grinds, she works hard. <coughs> and she's like, you know, in this race of repetitive, like just making money to like have it ends meet, right? Right. You get tired of it, you know, you get tired of it. And that's what I saw. And I had to find a different route. And like when I heard you talking to me about that and all these videos on top of it, I really had a, I had a full like ride over to South Mountain. Um, at the time, right? And Full I, ride scholarship. Yeah, huh? just to go over there. They had an apartment ready to go. I was about wow. to pitch. They had some of the best junior college kids that go two years there straight to D1. Wow. Um, and uh, right at that moment, I really just jumped right out of it. And I told the coach, I called him up, and I literally told him, hey, I'm not coming. I found a different route. I found a different route in, like, business. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a multiple, like – like a multimillionaire, realistically, yeah. I want to own businesses. <clears throat> I want to go, I want to do next level things. Wow. And 
you know, they definitely tried to s- over the phone, like kind of was confused. Um, yeah. My aunt was confused because my aunt went with me. My mom was confused. My dad was confused. A bunch of things like my family was just a little bit confused because all they knew was baseball. Right. right. So I started getting into it. I started listening to Les Brown, Jim Rohn. Um, and I'm guessing that you, of oh, yeah, course, of course, you already know. R- real quick, I want to uh, go in a little bit more in depth on, on that before we, before we uh, move on the story. So, so you were, what, weeks away, a month away from just going to college, full ride scholarship, being a pitcher, ba- basically a stepping stone to going to D1 and potentially going pro after that. Mm-hmm. And you realized that that wasn't the path that you wanted to take. Mm-hmm. That wasn't what was going to bring you what, what, what you wanted. And uh, so you, you you basically, how, how was that when you called? You call, I assume you had to tell your parents, hey, I know you guys wanted me to do this. You guys are all supporting me. But, like, look, I just it's not what I want to do. I have a different path that I fully Massive believe emotions. is going to be. Massive emotion. <clears throat> what I mean by that is I was literally, I remember the time, like, I was sitting um, on the corner um, in Anthem, Arizona, and I was literally outside walking around, like, didn't have really anybody at the time. And, um, no, no support you're saying? Yeah, no support. Well, like besides my aunt, my mom was there, you know, like to help me out, whatever the case may be, but I'm walking around just with my hands, like, just like crying, like, like literally crying on the street. Like, yo, all these people are doubting me. Oh, I have so many doubters that don't even think that I can do this because they only know me for, um, baseball and they only know me for for what I'm about to go do. And I, and I actually was like broken down at that point. And it was realistically one of the hardest things for me to overcome, but that's where I truly found myself to go to that next level and really take all that emotion, like, and bring it to fire, bring it to like entrepreneurship and go after it, really start achieving my goals, getting into sales. And that's, that's (coughs) when it really took off in my life, you know? So I imagine based on what I've experienced and I did kind of watch that that part of your life unfold. I imagine people probably thought you were a joke. No, 100%. Um, during that time, I actually had a lot of my friends that I truthfully, like, when you're going through these changes, you find a lot of your friends that you think are actually your true right. friends, which I still have really close friends from high school, of course, yeah. but um, you do find some people that weed out after mm-hmm. you start making the changes for 100%. your life. Um and that's what I need people to understand is like if you're a young entrepreneur and you're in a home, then you're in a town and you're in a small space where you feel like you're going through a change and not everybody's on your side and you're about to take this entrepreneurial journey, you need to know that you could do it. You need to have faith in yourself because it's a really big thing, Taylor. And honestly, this is one thing I wanted to tell everybody is like faith versus fear. Yep. Like having fear and faith in your life like is a big thing 100%. that took me far. And uh, once you have a lot of faith in what you're going to do, nobody's going to stop you. No one's going to stop you on your mission. Like I promise you. And that's what changed my whole life is like, I had a hundred percent faith that I'm going to win. I'm Mm going to be successful. I'm going to be confident in what I'm going to do. And I just dominated the field and I'm going to dominate every single day, no matter what it is I take on, you know, let me kind of bring up, bring to light uh, something you mentioned. Um, You said that basically you watched as friends like kind of fell off people you thought were your, your best friends fell off and you kind of either had to remove them or they removed themselves. <clears throat> so there's a few c- interesting concepts with that is first of all, um, it, it's bro. It's, it's, it's the, it's survival of the fittest out here, man. Mm-hmm. And, uh, at the end of the day, like the weak will always remove themselves. Mm-hmm. And, Amen. And, 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 and second of all, um, dude, it's crazy to me. You know, people don't understand that if you have a, if you have something you're trying to accomplish and the people that are around you aren't, supporting and and helping and um assisting in getting you to where you're wanting to go sometimes it's it's best you just cut your losses you know what i mean and and move on you know i had a lot of friends back in the day that when i started getting into entrepreneurship and business and sales and things and and basically telling people yeah i'm not going to college i'm going to go become a millionaire uh and and run businesses they probably thought you were crazy everyone thought i was crazy man yes everyone thought i was crazy people laughed i got made fun of um I mean, dude, even, even some family members were like, what are you doing, dude? Go, yep. Just give up on the whole idea of being successful, go to college and, um, and just, just get a, just get a normal job. And, uh, and I, I thought to myself, wow, that sounds terrible. Uh, that doesn't sound like what I want. Right. And, uh, yeah, dude. So, so I assume you obviously went through the same thing, same yeah. concept. Like it's, um, <clears throat> it's just truthfully to go back on that or just real quick. It's just like, if you're out there and you're experiencing that 
where you have friends that are actually stopping you from achieving your success, taking that risk in yourself, just forget about it. If they're not supporting you, they're not actually going to be your true friends at the end of the day. Yep. Um, they're going to support you through whatever um, you may go through, and that's just how it is. They're yep. going to support you no matter what you do. People come and go, man. 100%. And the people that stay are the people you, that you need and want to, to have there. 100%. Especially when the people that are there with you when you're grinding and on the come up and, 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 you, and you are broke, those are the people you want with you when you're rich, when exactly. you're chilling on a yacht in Mexico, exactly. when, you're, when you're taking care of your, your family and their family, exactly. their financial needs. Those yeah. are the people you want with you. And, like, honestly, one thing is, like, when people, like, my mom um, is a great lady. She's helped me out through so much stuff. And, like, to see her be in a position where she's now um, back up on her feet because she just went through a bunch of stuff with, you know, my life and my family when my dad and her kind of got through things and a bunch of family problems, right? And she just had to get back up on her feet and be a strong single mother just for the time and, you know, and really make it happen and just to see her and help her build her life and see her now being able to have a place pay rent help her out pay rent myself when i can too all the time and just see her back up on her feet making money working and just honestly happy and just how i changed my mindset and how i helped her change her mindset in that time um because she was seeing me on this crazy mission of success and she was just growing out of her because what I call it is some people go through this time where you have your, I call it a vase. You just sometimes have a broken vase, right? You got to rebuild your vase. You got to rebuild it. And that's what we had to go through. And that's what I think I was going through as a human is rebuilding myself to be that, you know, millionaire, that multimillionaire to go after those goals that people really don't want to achieve is like, you got to build these certain spiritual, these certain physical and these mental traits that you can battle through all the thick and thin because right now in this world, like you go through problems. And if for entrepreneurs like us, like people think like every day is like perfect. Like, no, not every day is perfect. We go through like the craziest hardships of like times that are actually thick because you're by yourself more, you know, you're by yourself, you're working by yourself. You don't really have that much. You don't, you don't have, you don't have, yeah, you don't have sometimes even a support system. Exactly. Even especially, when, especially when you're on the in, the, in the beginning stages. And that's a huge thing with Rise Energy <clears throat> to bring up Rise, honestly, like yeah. with what Nolan's built, Jordan Benning and this whole thing, like yep. realistically, like this is a support system. This is a family. This is a people that have your back. This is entrepreneurs that want to succeed, want to go to the next level. And it's like, dude, when I came in here um, in this sales position two years ago, Um, when I was just in a different door-to-door company, not knowing what anything was about sales, it was like the athletic, like that competitiveness, it still was there. They have the leaderboards, they have competitiveness, like things that like any athlete can get around and be competitive, right? And just go after it. And that's what I really saw. And now Rise Energy's here. We're winning. We, We got the, we got the best of the best, man. Like it's like a full, literally a ship full of people that are just yep. like going to win. So this, like, we, we all have the same mission, the same goal. We, we, we support each other. Uh, we, we, we make sure that we win, dude. Exactly. That's and that's that. why it's a blessing. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a huge blessing to work for Rise Energy, honestly. And that's why it's amazing to be on the podcast too. Yep. Like, 100%. 100%. 100%, dude. So, so uh, back to your story, man. So, uh, so, so I assume, you know, to tell us about kind of how terrifying that was for you. You said you said you were in the street one night, literally. You said you were crying, and you're trying to, I, I, trying to, I assume, figure out what the next steps were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dive more, more in, onto that. Yeah. So realistically, like the next steps were in my mind was like, hey, I'm gonna, lo- I'm gonna attract success. I'm gonna attract whatever the case may be. I'm gonna have faith. I'm gonna. And you're, you're probably willing to run through a brick wall if needed. Yeah, like anything anything at all, I'm going to do it right to get to that success because every single person was doubting me at the time. So it's like, if I don't do this and I fail, like, what do I have to show for it? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, every person known me for an athlete. So now it's time to go into this entrepreneurial space, learn business. So I got around, um, Dan Cavada, Dan Cavada brought me into the industry. Realistically, I met him through this Instagram place that more so I started learning sales there. Didn't really make that much money. I, I call it an internship. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. I started going in there, met Dan. He brought me into sales. It was like, honestly, the hardest time of my life because I was broke with no car, with nothing to my name. Um, and then I randomly, okay. It was crazy. I was doing that Instagram. I was selling packages, whatever the case may be at the time. And now I bumped into this other guy 
named Matthew. He gave me a random Prius when I started detailing cars. I, I tracked that into my life. I needed nice. a car at the time. Okay. So I started attracting this guy into my life. Matthew, he helped me out. He said, Hey, you come over, you detail cars. I'm going to give you a Prius. Nice. I detailed cars, got a Prius, started literally just changing my mindset, doing DoorDash, doing Grubhub, listening to all these podcasts, all these things, ex exactly how we're doing it right now. But my mindset started to shift. Um, I started to attract the people that I wanted. Um, I was the hardest time in my life because I had nothing. I was making no money. And I said to myself, like, hey, I'm going to start making. I am so happy and grateful I'm going to make 20000 a week. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm going to make 20000 a week. And I was writing it. I was writing it. Of course. Affirmations. Of course. I was affirming it. You already know. You're telling your brain it's already happening. And that was, like, at a young age, at 20 years old, yeah. telling myself that while I was realistically, there was a time in my life where I was staying with my Aunt Laurie, um, and I was staying out of her house. She thought I was crazy because I was in her bathroom saying it out loud, looking myself in the mirror. She thought you were nuts. Yeah. She's like, holy crap, this kid's a, like a schizophrenia or something like that. Yeah, like, like what, what is going what on? What is he talking about to himself in there? What is going on, right? Yeah. So, and I'm telling you right now, I was telling myself this over and over again because I could see it. I could see myself mm -hmm. helping, leading people, being that person, and now everybody calls me Hype Man Howie. To oh go yeah. into that, I mean, oh yeah. you know, Hype Man Howie came about, right? So yeah. Hype Man Howie is here to change lives. Yeah. Um, my goal to go, I was telling myself I'm going to make 20000 We achieved that. We make 20000 a week. Solar's crazy, yep. right? Um, but my main goal is not just to make money. Um, my main goal is to impact lives, bring energy. Um, yep. I'm an energy guy. Yep. I have so much energy to give people. Like, if you need energy, I go in a room, and I'm telling you, you can get it. I want to yep. bring that to a lot of people, though. Y y you're, you're, yeah, you're definitely really good at charging up, charging people's batteries, man. That's exactly L what Lighting I a fire do. under people. Exactly. And that's what I want to do. And, like, that has a long-term goal to go into that. Like, my long-term goal in life is to really impact people and bring light to people's life. And if that could be, like, Tony Robbins or something like that, just getting up on stage and whatever the case may be, doing gigs for people and going – and just bringing that energy that they need, that light, because people don't have that. Like, right. I feel like people don't have the light. 100%. They need light. And, and, dude, it's because society has trained the masses to to not be ambitious, to not go after their dreams, to just be average. You know what I mean? And uh, and really, honestly, what you just explained, that whole story you just explained, was your breakthrough and in, in, in how you escaped what you were conditioned to believe from a young age and you fit, reprogrammed your brain to believing and, and knowing that you can accomplish literally anything you want. And you just literally do began dominating your path one step at a time. Next thing you know, look at you now. And then just to go real quick onto that, Taylor, like it's basically called the matrix. Like, yeah. like to be honest with yeah. you, we're in, we're living in the matrix, like yeah. bottom line there. Are, people need to wake up in this world. People just need to wake up a little bit. You need to see a different way in life. Um, not anyone's coming to save you. Not anyone's going to come, like, pick you up and take you to the finish line. Right. I need you and everyone out there to honestly imagine the success that you want. See yourself doing it and then just go achieve it because that's what people are lacking in this world is, like, just a vision. Get that vision and run with it. Like, that's what people need is just a vision and then attack their day. Vision, attack. That's what I truthfully believe that take, takes me everywhere, like, takes me to my success. It's just finding a vision attaching myself to it, attaching myself to my why every day, and then just going after my goals and not letting, like, my foot off the gas. You got to keep your foot on the gas. 100%. There's sharks in the water. There's sharks, dude. 100%. There's 100% sharks that are here to take your position, here to come after you. Yep. And if you're not ready to fully attack, like, your position's going to be gone. You yep. know what I'm saying? 100%. So that's that's just how I see it. <clears throat> no, yeah, you're, you're spot on, dude. So, um... What I know you kind of already briefly mentioned a little bit of, of your of your um, your why, but uh, to tell us a little bit more in depth, like what what wakes you up in the morning, man? Like what what makes wakes you up in the morning prepares you to go attack life and work your butt off and and be prepared to work from literally sun up to sundown. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, going on the why. So that's a huge thing that I learned, um, not just from you, but honestly from a lot of leaders out here, um, a lot of great people that. I follow that talk about why and your why is a huge thing and my why is realistically I wake up every single day knowing that you know it could be my last um it could be my last day on this earth and that the fact that my mom is working hard every single day 
to provide for my little sister, my brother. Um, and, you know, they're great people. My mom's a great person. And I just know that I need to make it happen for her mm -hmm. so she doesn't have to keep on going out there working every single day and, like, I just want to provide. I just want to be able to be in a position every single day that I will never, ever have to go back to a position where I had zero dollars in my bank account. And that wakes me up and that keeps me going is like, yo, I can go out and give my mom eighteen hundred dollars, nineteen hundred dollars any single day mm -hmm. of the week because I'm over here doing what I have to do every single yep. day. Right. That, and that, that's what wakes me up. So, so so what you're saying, you're basically I mean, you, what excites you is the fact that you can give your mom yeah i assume that's your biggest motivator based on what you just said you can give your mom a better way of life exactly. you can allow her to sleep better at night exactly because like I she deserves that, it she deserves it like honestly at the end of the day she she was there she she had a great life she deserves every single thing that she has coming for her and like honestly that's what i'm going to do i'm going to keep on making money i'm going to keep on living lavish and i'm going to keep on you know doing whatever the case may be to it. help her live the life that she deserves while i live the life i deserve I you love know what it. i'm saying 100 that's exactly it, what we're going to do i love it bro yes sir what uh, what type of impact do you see yourself leaving on the world around you over the course of the next 10, 20 years? Um, honestly, over the next 10, 20 years, the impact's going to be unreal. It's going to be it's going to be unreal. So as many people, young entrepreneurs, adults, I don't care what age you are. Right. If you're 46 years old, 56 years old, 76, 10 years old, 12 years old, 21 years old, whatever the case may be, I'm going to impact your life because I'm going to bring you energy. I'm going to find a way to get you around the fire, get you to feel like at any time of your life, it's not dead. You're not at a point where you're dying because when you're stop learning, you like when you stop learning and you stop growing yourself, I feel like that's where people need to understand is like my impact's going to be, I want to tell people like, yo, you can wake up at any time at any age and still keep on going in your life. You don't have to die when you're 56 years old and just stop learning and stop growing just because you hit a certain age. I want to wake up all those people, bring motivation, bring the energy. And I know discipline takes you far in life, but I do want to bring energy and motivation I to the it. world. To I the love world. it, bro. I 100%. love it, man. 100%. That's awesome, bro. Um, last question for you. What, uh, <clears throat> what are your, what are your, what are your goals, man? Like what are your goals as far as the short term goals on what you want to accomplish maybe this year, next year? And then what do you see yourself what you, like accomplishing in 30 years from now? hundred percent. So one thing that I, uh, really go by is like, I live in the present a yeah. lot. I live in the moment. I live in every single step of the way I believe is like each day. I'm just very grateful for the day. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that I have a plan. I have a daily routine. I have a way of attacking each day. Um, so long-term goals, I would say that I'm not all the way attached to my long-term yeah. goals. Right. That's fine. Sure. You're still, you're still brand new in the process. man. Yep, exactly. Short-term goals. Um, I'm very attached to, right. I have a new brand that I'm releasing that I really want to get around that. I have a bunch of guys that I'm working with on my team that I'm working alongside that we're releasing. It's money line. We're releasing money line sales money line. and we're going to come love out it. with it. And we're going to have a, one of the biggest sales divisions coming out in the solar where anybody that it. is looking for a way, let's say you're in a different division, pest control, whatever the case may be, another door to door, like you have a way to come in and go straight to the money. It's a money movement. You know what I I'm saying? It. And that's one of my short term goals right now is building a team that, you know, takes you <clears throat> from a blue collar worker and takes you into the industry from any place. If you're an Amazon worker, if you're someone that has no sales background and we could take you from that person, bring you into rise energy and put you on a straight movement to the money. That's what we're going to do for you. And that's one of my short term goals this year is to grow a team that's honestly going to dominate in the sales division. That's going to be huge. And we're going to have a big home to land a lot of people that want to come over from different divisions that want to actually come and dominate this field. Like that's my it. main goal right now. And um, this year we're going to, we're going to clear crazy numbers and long-term goals. Of course we want to have a real estate portfolio. That's, of course. you know, everybody wants to have that. Mm -hmm. And of course that's one of my main goals is having a nice, thick, juicy real estate portfolio step by step. Um, we're young, but um, we got to start, you know, yep. and that's the main goal is like this year we do want to, kind of get into that and we want to have a big s step in that way um honestly cryptocurrency has been my huge short-term goals is just stacking the portfolio um getting to a certain goals that i have in my life to get there to stack as much as i can inside crypto so then when i'm ready to buy that first property i can 
you know, pivot and make that big move for myself. I love it, dude. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with the long-term goals, man. <clears throat> um, of course, I have them, but I don't really talk on them too much because you're focused you know, on the now, man. Focus on the now, hit those goals, it. and everything will add up, and then I'll be there. I love it, bro. Yes, sir. Well, hey, you guys heard it here first. The money line movement yes, with sir. with Mr. Hype Man Howie. Yes, sir. I love coming. it, dude. It's I love coming, it, dude. dude. Thank you again. Hey, I know you're gonna make a huge impact, bro. I know you're gonna change a lot of people's lives. I've been, you know, honored to be able to watch your process and your journey up to this point. I'm excited to see you continue to dominate, man. Um, I'm excited that I, I get to work with you every day, man. So, yes, um, thank you again. Absolutely. Appreciate you being on the podcast. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, for those of you that uh, wanna follow Mr. Jacob Howie here. Hey. We're going to leave a link to his uh, to his Instagram, social media, whatever it is. Hi, man. Howie. Come on. There we go. There we go. go. Um, and uh, so if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this where you can hear from young entrepreneurs that are killing it, you can hear their story and hear how you can do it too. Uh, like, follow, subscribe, and uh, we'll uh, be uploading an episode every single week. So uh, get ready for the next one. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs>